18. It's an interesting number, isn't it? In most countries, 18 is the age of majority, meaning you can now vote and are sexually viable. It's the atomic number of Argon, a Chinese symbol for prosperity, and was worn by Peyton Manning when he played for Indianapolis. He was so badass, Frank Tripaka, the original wearer, actually took the number out of retirement just for him. In the National Pokédex, 18 is Pidgeot. In Pokémon Red, Blue, and Yellow, TM18 was Counter, but in every generation since, it's been Rain Dance. Ironically, before Black and White, Pidgeot couldn't learn either. Aside from zero, it's the only number that's twice the sum of its digits. The Hebrew word for life has a value of 18, and as of this recording, it's the total number of times Princess Peach has ever been kidnapped. This bimbo has appeared in more games than any other female video game character in existence. What a freaking waste. There's a reason over 50% of the gaming populace is either neutral or resentful on the subject of Peach, and it's because she sets back women's rights about uh, 200 years. Pink dress, high heels, blonde hair, blue eyes, a voice so high only dogs can hear it, and even when she gets into a good melee or brawl with the boys, what are her weapons of choice? A parasol, a frying pan, and her butt! Even if you end up fighting her, chances are she'll be too busy gardening or hiding behind your vassals to attack you anyway. Worst depiction of the fairer gender ever. This from the same company that brought us Samus Aran, don't forget. The worst part is, it didn't used to be like this. Peach, known as Toadstool back then, was actually a beginner favorite in the American Mario Bros. 2. Why? Because she could do something no other character could. Float over the whole damn game. And she will float on, alright, already she will float on, alright, run like hell from the killer mask, alright, don't worry, I'm sick of this song, alright. It wasn't until 2006, almost 18 years later, that Peach would be a playable character in another traditional platformer. You see, once upon a time, Miyamoto was drunk off his ass on his favorite sake. He walked into the Nintendo design offices and said, You know what I want to see? A game where Mario and Luigi get kidnapped, and Peach has to save them. The crew took one look at his concept notes and said, Um, aren't people going to react negatively to this? To which he replied, Oh, sure, okay, if you don't want to make the game, that's fine. Oh, by the way, GG, you're all fired if I don't see a trailer by Saturday. Yeah, I'm Shigeru Miyamoto, bitch. I wipe my ass with your yearly paychecks, and I get to work, nerds. He woke up two weeks later in a hotel lobby talking to Pee Wee when he saw this on a nearby TV. If you can stand up to really mean people, maybe you have what it takes to be a princess. And that's when Shiggy realized he had made a terrible, terrible mistake. Just the mention of this title is enough to make Mario fans facepalm. How many missed opportunities were there to improve the character's image in this game? Well, let's run down the stereotype checklist and see. Fighting with a parasol. Lots of flowers, pink, and assorted fluffy things. All your powers being based on emotion. And of course, absolutely pushover difficulty. It's practically a prerequisite that you have to be wearing a training bra to play this game. There's nothing sadder than a grown man drowning in his sorrows, huddled around his DS playing Super Princess Peach meaning I should be pretty depressed right about now. But maybe I'm just looking at this the wrong way. Maybe I'm just so jaded a gamer that I'm not even willing to give this thing a chance, even though it might be a great game. So you know what? I'm going to go into this project from the viewpoint of the only person on Earth who could possibly go into something like this with an open mind and zero expectations. Oh my god! I can't believe Nintendo finally decided to make a game store in me! I mean, it only makes sense. I'm smart, independent, I'm a wonderful role model for little girls. I make a royal decree that every single one of you is going to love this project. Enjoy! Nintendo! Yep. This is actually happening right now. Hello everybody and welcome to my new Let's Play, Super Princess Peach for the DS. Oh man, I'm just gonna leave it here on the title screen for a little while. 
Just as Peach slowly descends into this island, you will watch as my mind slowly slips into madness. Okay, so I want to point out one more thing about how blatantly sexist this game is. Watch this. Um, which button? There we go. Watch what happens when you delete a file here. She scrubs it clean. <laughs> what the hell, man? Not even Cooking Mama had to do that. Anyways, this is Mysterious Vibe Island. It is a land not far from the Mushroom Kingdom, a land rarely spoken of. For Vibe Island is said to hold great power. What kind of great power? Bowser heard of it and built a summer villa there. Oh, that's convenient. Using the magical powers that video game villains always seem to have to be able to raise structures in the span of two minutes. You might have noticed something weird right there. It looks like the entire room is connected. But because of the way the screens were set up, he will actually trans you'll actually see things transition from the bottom one to the top one. It will be kind of choppy. Just try not to pay attention to it. Oh, right. Sorry. I got a little carried away. Hey, you there. Close that door in front of you, will you? Oh, who, me? These walls have ears, you know. And the hills have eyes, too. You ever play the original games? Literally, they had eyes. I'll show Mario and company who's boss once and for all! Haha, <laughs> without further ado, let's take this scepter for a test ride. Yeah, so this is the basic plot of the entire game. Bowser finds the source of all the power in the entire island, this thing called the Vibe Scepter. And it apparently has the, peop has the power to make emotions go absolutely wild. Because we all know, according to every woman in existence, emotions make you stronger. According to Nintendo, anyway. Yeah! <laughs> That's the new Bowser battle cry, apparently. Okay, head in! Make me proud! Ready? I'm monitoring through this Koopa Shell Seaver. How do they actually have walkie-talkies in this day? Is it... Oh, wait. Hello? Hello? Asshat, I'm talking to you! Oh, there we go. Charge! <laughs> wow, who knew you could cram so many Hammer Brothers into one castle? God, this is a sad scene, isn't it? Look at that. How the hell did they overtake him like that? If this were any normal Mario game, he would have stomped every single one of them. There's just something inherently wrong with this scene. I mean, look at this. I mean, this just doesn't happen. Judging by the expressions on their faces, we can see they weren't affected by the Vibe Scepter or anything like that. I mean, Mario looks pretty depressed, but he's not freaking out like everybody else it's been used on. I don't know who else is with me on this, but this is just a really downer image. I haven't seen Mario that depressed since the launch of the CDI. Chances are we're gonna find out over this course of- over the course of this adventure. Wow, I can't even talk today. I blame Peach, just like everything else that's wrong with this world. Uh, hey, what are you doing? Steady, steady now. Uh-oh, Goomba's still affected by the powers of the scepter here. No, what are you doing? You'll destroy us all! And everything goes absolutely crazy. We got some that are pissed off, some that are happy, some that are sad. Bowser's all jolly, look at that. He's laughing like Santa Claus up there on his throne. And at that moment, Peach was returning from conveniently being far away from all of the chaos that ensued. I guess somebody has to go solve the problems, but really, I'd rather play a game that starred Toadsworth. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> What's the hubbub, bub? Oh dear. Hey! Look over here! Read this! Read what? <laughs> bratty mushroom lovers. This time I've captured Mario. Who will save you now? If you want him, come get him! <laughs> and of course, we can't rely on Mario to go save Mario. So who goes to save him? Princess Peach. And to think, without that note, this entire game never would have happened. Thanks, Bowser. You're my real hero. Calm everyone down, or someone's going to get hurt! Come on! 
So now we actually get to play a mini game during this cutscene here. I'm not going to be paying too much attention to it because I got to read at the same time, so don't mind me. What do you think you're doing? Come back! It's dangerous! You mustn't go alone! Gee, I wonder where I've heard that before. You say that you, you must save Mario this time? So you're going after him, hmm? Are you serious? Well, I suppose you are quite capable. And what makes you suppose that? What part of anything she's ever done gives you that impression? So yeah, just like Zelda, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. An umbrella. But not just any umbrella. This one can talk to you. Hiya, I'm Perry. If you're in a pinch, just call me. What? You know, I always wondered what those symbols actually meant. When you just give a character a dot dot dot, or just an exclamation point, I always wondered what those audibly sounded like. Like, would, it, would an exclamation be mark just be, uh? Would a um, question mark be like, uh? Uh? Anyways. Alright, here we go. I know everything about Vibe Island. Eh, 117. That's not bad. It's not good either. Didn't break my record at least. So here we are. la dee da Plains. Why waste any time? Let's hop right into the first level, everybody. Here we go. Uh, this is actually happening, isn't it? Now, as you'll see here, this is a hint block. We jump into it. Perry will teach us the controls, but... Since we already had to figure out how to jump in order to jump into that, that's kind of useless. Tiny little bit of piece information here. We're picking up coins, but you'll notice our coin counter is a little too big. As Perry explained there, that's because those coins are for a shop, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Right now, I just kind of want to focus on the stage itself and all the aspects of the game. I want that big coin, though. You definitely want to get as many as much money as possible in this game, because there are a lot of things to buy with them. It's not like a normal Mario game where you have lives. No, you have infinite lives, adding to the easiness of the whole thing. Hey, a ball. Let's pick it up. You can take this ball and jam it into this thing here. Yeah, party ball! What's this? <laughs> hey, Toad! Check out my ball! I love balls, didn't you know? Toads are the prerequisite collect-a-thon item in the game, if you will. You need to get them all if you want the best ending, so yeah, try not to miss any. Okay, I want to point out something really quick before I start explaining these vibes here. Um, Peach? Look at this. Unlike Mario, she's way too light to actually stomp a Goomba. You can jump on it all day and it won't do anything. But what I did just right there... Okay, this is her first ability. Her first emotion, if you will. That would be joy. Joy allows you to fly. Now, by eating enemies like I just did, you can pick things up and you can absorb them into the umbrella. By eating enemies like that, you can restore your vibe, which you need for the emotion powers. Unfortunately, because unfortunately they do run out after a little while. This next one here is sadness, which not only makes Peach have two, uh, which not only gives you water to work with, but it also lets Peach run faster for a short period of time. There are situations where you're going to need that. The other two emotions I'm sure we'll get to in the span of this video, so I'm not going to go into them just yet, just in case you don't know what they are. This is fantastic visuals, isn't it? Gee, a giant arrow made of coins. I wonder what I need to do here. We Also, you can't collect collectibles while under power-ups. Wow, I really can't talk tonight. I'm having a really hard time articulating everything. And then again, that's pretty standard for me. Still haven't gotten used to this whole thing. Anyways, as you might have noticed, whenever we walk into an area... Pick you up, eat you... Now, what's over here? Ah, one more toad. Oh, that Goomba doesn't look happy. Well, let's cheer him up with a little tornado! See? He was just so happy to be sent off flying there. I bet he's feeling better already. 
Okay, do you notice that? That little Metal Gear exclamation mark that she gives? Peach has an intuition, which will let you know whenever something's inside an area that you're in. Oh, here we go. The exit gate right here. Yeah! Still got it, baby. 50 coins, and you're gonna need every single one you can get. Like I said before, there are a crap ton of things to buy. Speaking of which, let's actually check out this shop. Inside the shop, there are all kinds of things you can buy, as you may imagine, as I've said many times. There are different abilities you can get. Float Brella, Pound Brella, Charge Brella. There's the Tough Coffee and Vibe Tea, which are the important items. They will increase the amount of hearts you have and your and the amount of emotions you have, respectively. There's music, things we haven't unlocked yet, puzzle pieces as well. We'll cover those later in the LP. And that's about it. We don't have a whole lot of money to buy anything with at the moment, but we'll get to that eventually. For now, let's hop into stage two and see if we can find it. Ah, uh, check this out. Yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. Some things just never get old, eh? Up here we have our first toad. Testing to see if I actually know how to use the Joy ability. Joy probably is the most used ability in the entire game. Like, watch this. This is another sequence right here. Another instance of using it to your advantage. Uh, I think it's second only to Anger, which is in the top right of the bottom screen right there. We'll cover that one in a little bit, though. As I've said before, definitely needed those coins right there, because you want to get Float Brella as soon as possible. Float Brella is basically a hover jump, sort of like Yoshi, or uh, kind of like what you could do with the cape in Super Mario World. Now, these blocks, no coins, what a rip. Down here, we have these guys. These guys are just here so you have some enemies to eat in case you don't have enough vibe left for this thing. <laughs> they, expect they expected you to run out because of the whole flying bit right there. I happen to have played this game before though. Don't ask why, it's a long ass story. Oh, what do you know? I don't have a whole lot to talk about, so I may as well cover it. But first, I gotta get this puzzle piece down here. Basically, you unlock puzzles. They don't really serve much of a functional purpose, but you can attempt them again and again. It's kind of like uh, Mario Party 4, I think it was, is in that sense. Oh, by the way, watch this. Yes, you saw that correctly. Were you paying attention to my health? Peach has the ability to heal herself in this game. No joke. She has something that most platforming heroes would kill for. Literally kill for. Now do you understand why this game is so easy? It takes like 10 million hits to kill her. Six hits with the health I've got right now. You're facing nothing but really slow enemies that can't really fight you anyway. And you have the power to, to heal yourself. On top of that, you can eat enemies for more vibe power, which in turn is basically more healing. You can just sit in one area and stock up on vibe and just refill your health instantly and, and just go through the rest of the stage. And that's one thing I want to talk about with this game. It's the ultimate irony. Peach is infinitely a lamer character than Mario w ever w than Mario is. But here's the weird thing. She can slide down hills like Mario, she can jump on enemies like Mario and throw shells around and whatnot, but that's not all. She's got a slide, she can float, she's got a ground pound, and the charge brella ability is basically she can charge up an attack and fire out a projectile at will. She's more versatile than he ever will be. Wait a minute, I missed something? Oh boy, okay. Hang on a second, I'll be right back to try and find that second toad. A third toad, what am I talking about? Aha! There we go. Alrighty then, on to stage three we go. But first, I'm gonna head by the shop real quick. And finally, I'm gonna get Float Brella. Like I said, you want this ability ASAP. This thing helps you out so much in so many situations, and by the end of the game, it's actually required. 
But for now, let's just hop on into stage three here. Probably the last one I'm going to cover here. Hmm. Oh, a wooden bridge. I wonder what I have to do here. Well, Peach Smash! <laughs> I love that one. Puzzle piece six. So at least we know we're on track here. You buy five from the shop, and you can get five in the stages. You're really going to have to rely on Peach's intuition if you want every single thing in the game, because there are collectibles everywhere, and some of them are pretty devious to find. That's really the only challenge you're going to get out of this game, is getting 100%. And you know what's interesting about this game? The item you get for actually getting 100%, the thing you can buy from the shop for zero coins, is... Well, uh, I guess I'll cover that at the end of the run. I'll keep it a surprise. I'll just let, leave you guys in suspense. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. Anyways, not much to talk about. Not much in terms of level variety. I say that, and now we see a brand new type of obstacle up here. Nothing over there. I definitely want this. I remember now. So how do we get past this? Well, I'm sure Perry will tell us if we hit this block. These blue things fall when you cross at normal speed. Why don't you try one of your vibes? Hmm. Well, Rage won't get me across that. I'll fly right into the spikes if I try Joy. Sadness, perhaps? Right. Like I said earlier, you run faster when you, you, when you use her Sadness ability. Let's stock up real quick. I'm not sure if you need to actually fly to get past this dude. Yeah, you need to fly. Okay, okay. Be that way. I gotta tell you how ex supremely awkward this is to actually do with a mouse and keyboard. Because the touch screen is controlled by the mouse. Now, I need my right hand on the arrow keys and my left hand on the jump and attack buttons. So, really, I need to stop moving if I want to start flying. And that can be a little bit of an issue at first. It can take some tricky finger work to actually make that work for you. It's not like the original game where you just tap the touch screen and get instantly back to having your fingers on the buttons. Definitely something you need to get used to when you start playing games on an emulator. Is that it's not nearly as easy as the actual thing. Of course, that's more of a... That's more my fault for not actually buying a gamepad. Now this thing here, I talked about it earlier. What you might not know is we need to use the tornado for joy to actually get rid of that thing. Finally, there's our ninth toe to the video. Nice. Jump on up here. Finally. Now I can just breeze through the rest of the thing, <laughs> as if I wasn't breezing through it before. But I can just breeze through it without having to think of anything at all. Water? Ugh. I don't want to get my shoes dirty. Oh, thank you, Perry. You really are a grab bag of little functions, aren't you? I would call him the Swiss Army Knife of Parasols, but that sounds a little too masculine for this game, don't you think? Ah, oh, I fudged it! Dang it. <laughs> of course they surround the highest scoring one with the lowest scoring ones. So everybody, that's it for me this time. In the next video, we will see what challenges await us in La Di Da Plains 1-4. Or will we? It's not happening, brother. I can't be associated with that travesty. I mean, I've got standards, for fuck's sake. Try sleeping at night, guys. Get this image out of your heads.